Hey guys, Sonny Bryson here, and today I'm going to explain exactly all the different ways you can actually go out there and buy an investment, okay? For example, a stop order, a limit order, a trading order, every single order, I'm going to break it down in this video here. That way you understand exactly how to limit your loss and also how to maximize your gains when it comes to you actually going out there and buying a stock at a specific price, or for example, below that price, but having everything done for you automatically by knowing exactly the type of order you should set for that stock you actually want to buy that's the goal for this video right here now if you guys are new to the channel guys i post videos every single day so make sure to also subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified on top of that also destroy the like button for the youtube algorithm i appreciate it a ton so thank you guys so much now the first type of order that we should all know is called a market order now that basically means you're going to buy at the market price or you're going to sell at the market price right then and there as fast as as possible that is all it means so say for example I go here to my phone which I'm gonna show you guys right here and the idea is in my Robinhood account and by the way although it says negative that's just a temporary loss on paper not a real loss because if I click for example all my entire portfolio in reality I'm still up by around 31% so do me a favor Whenever you're investing, don't focus on the short term, focus on the long term. That's the most important thing. However, when it comes to a market order, the idea is, say for example, I want to buy some Microsoft shares. And right now, Microsoft is selling for $203.41 and it's very expensive, right? But when I click trade and I click, for example, buy, the idea is, well, if I want to buy some shares and I want to buy, for example, 10 shares of Microsoft, which is going to be like around $2,034, well, when I buy... I'm going to buy at the current market price. If I want to sell my shares, I'm going to sell it at the current market price. That's the core idea when it comes to like, hey, I'm buying at the market price level. I'm making a market order. That is all that means. Very simple to understand once you understand exactly what it means. Now, let's move on to the second type. And that's basically called a limit order. Now, this one is a little bit more complicated, but in a way, is still pretty simple and all you're doing is basically limiting your loss and also limiting your potential to actually make some profits if that's what you want to do so the idea is you're going to place a limit on what price you want to pay or at what price you actually want to sell for so again when I go into Robinhood again and I'm looking at Microsoft here and I click for example trade and I click buy the idea is if I click the top right corner where it says shares I click that right there is going to give me some different options to how I actually want to go ahead and actually buy that Microsoft share. So when I click, for example, limit order, the entire idea of a limit order at a buy is saying, for example, well, I know the market price currently is $203, but I don't want to pay more than $196. Meaning that when the price of that stock goes down to $196, if it does, I'm going to go ahead and buy at that price. That's the limit. Now, when it comes to a limit order also, you also have to remember that's basically you're going to buy at that price or better so I can buy easily at 196 or better than that and maybe 195 or 194 if it keeps going down by the time my order is actually made a transaction that's the core idea I basically limit the amount of money I'm willing to pay for that share of Microsoft stock now when it comes to actually selling well, in reality, if I click, for example, let's go back here and I click trade and I click sell. Well, again, I can set basically a limit order on the sell. So I might say, for example, well, I don't want to sell my stock of Microsoft stock until it hits $200. And ten dollars and once it hits that then I want to go ahead and make that sell that's the cool idea about a limit order but once it's that two hundred and ten dollar mark that's when that trade is going to be executed at either that same price or maybe a better price right then and there and that's basically what a limit order actually is hopefully that makes a ton of sense and the way I think about it guys is basically whenever I'm going to buy a stock I'm going to limit the price I pay for it or a better price I'm gonna pay for if it goes even lower or for example if I'm going to sell a stock I'm going to limit the price at whatever I'm actually going to sell that stock for and it's going to be obviously in this case a higher price that's the core idea when it comes to like hey I'm going to sell this stock with a limit order or buy the stock with a limit order
okay? Now, number three is basically a stop order, or in a way, some people call it a stop loss order. And the idea is, it's similar to a limit order, but in a sense, it converts into a market price order once that price actually hits. Now, I know that sounds like gibberish, trust me, but I'm gonna explain it right now. And again, let's use a visual example here. So again, this same stock, right? And the stock is, again, Microsoft. And Microsoft right now is at $203. So I go again to trade, I go to buy, and I go to, for example, shares, and I click, for example, well, I actually wanna do a stop order, right? And the core idea with a stop order is that basically, once that stock hits the price that you want to sell it at, the idea is the entire order is going to convert into a market order and it's going to sell that investment right then and there. While a limit order is going to sell it for that same price or a better price, okay? But this one converts it right then and there and tries to get you that price right then and there. And the same thing applies, for example, on the way down. If you say, for example, well, I wanna sell my investments at no less than $190 because I don't wanna lose that much money, right? So once it hits that $190 mark, is going to convert it into a market price order and it's going to try to sell it right then and there. Well, the limit order is going to try to sell it at that price or maybe just a lower price also. That's the core idea when it comes to a stop order. It's very simple to understand, okay? By the way, when you click continue on Robinhood, it's gonna tell you exactly, well, at what price do you want to buy it at? In my case, I might say, well, I wanna buy it at maybe $210, which makes no sense, right? Because why would you buy it at a higher price? Or for example, I want to buy it at maybe $200. So once it hits that price right there, well, it's going to convert into a market price order and it's going to buy it right then and there. And that's the entire point of a stop order, okay? Hopefully this makes sense and it should be because you guys are pretty smart. So it should be pretty simple to actually get it. A stop order converts into a market price while a limit order is going to buy it at that price or a better price. That's the main difference, but it's not that much of a big difference. Now, now number four is a stop limit order. Now this one is actually also very simple. And if you know what a limit order is, and also what a stop order is, it's kind of like a combination between both of them, okay? That's the core idea here. So basically, say for example, I wanna sell some Microsoft stock and I wanna use a stop order limit, right? So when I click trade, I click sell, I click shares and I click, for example, well, I wanna set a stop limit order. And the core idea is that basically my stop order is going to convert into a limit order once it passes the price I actually want it to pass. So for example, I wanna say, for example, well, I want the stop order to be executed once it passes $190 or it goes down to $190. So I click 190, I click continue, and the idea is to say, well, now what is your limit price, okay? And my limit price might be, for example, well, once it hit 190, I wanna set a limit price at no more than maybe $185, I go ahead and actually sell. So I click right here, 185, I click continue, and that is the core idea. I can set it, for example, until 4 p.m. tomorrow, or until 90 days, or for example, good till cancel. And you might ask me, Tommy, well, why would I do this in the first place? Why does this actually make sense? Well, the idea is, guys, that sometimes, when you're investing to the stock market, a stock might take a massive plummet, but it might recover very quickly, and you never really know. So so say for example, again, I'm going to buy Microsoft stock, but it currently costs $200. I bought at that price, but I want to make sure that if it falls below $190. I don't want to actually lose a lot of money, but once it goes below 190, I execute a stop order that converts into a limit order. And my limit order is going to be maybe, for example, 180, right? So if it goes below 180, well, that's when I'm actually going to sell. So it's kind of using a combination of both of them. That way, if the stock bounces back, you never execute and you never have to sell and the stock just basically recovers. That way you don't lose any money whatsoever by selling at a short. That's the core idea right there. So basically think about it like this, okay? A stop order converts into a market order, but a stop limit order converts into a limit order that then limits your risk in case the stock actually bounces back up. That's the core idea when it comes to a stop limit order. Now, the coolest one, and number five, the last one here, is called a trailing stop order. And this one is actually pretty cool, okay? And you guys are gonna like this one a ton. And it's actually going to save you a ton of money and save you a ton of money in losses or make you a ton of money in the future. And here's why. Now, say for example, I wanna use this technique, the trailing stop order with Microsoft again, right? So I click, for example, I want to basically sell this investment and I wanna use a trailing stop order, right? Now, the idea is that basically, 
here's the cool thing about this guys right you can set it as a percentage or a fixed number now the idea is guys say for example i put here 10%. Now, Tommy, what exactly does this mean? Okay. A trail on stop order. It means that basically if my investment, right, goes down by 10%, that's when it's going to execute and sell my investments right there. It's going to limit my risk to 10%. Once it is 10%, I go ahead, I sell it and I limit my risk right there. But for example, if the stop keeps climbing and climbing and climbing and going up, it does not sell it. Now say for example, the new share price of Microsoft now becomes for example, $300. Well, if it falls below 10% of that number right there, well, that's going to sell it right there. That's the point right there. So basically in a way, if I bought a 200 and it goes below 10%, I sell right there, I limit my loss. But if it keeps climbing up and climbing up, whatever the new number is, 10% loss of that, that's when it's actually going to sell. But the point is, I don't have to wait until it goes back to 10% below the price I bought it at, at $200 to then go ahead and sell it for a massive loss. This way, if I got a gain all the way up to $300, I sell at 10% less, but that way I still made a profit. It's basically trailing the price of the stock, and if it loses 10%, you sell right there, but if it keeps going up, you don't sell whatsoever, and that way you can keep making money and making money and making money. That's the core idea. And by the way, most likely, you're only gonna lose 10% or 15% on a stock or an ETF, usually, when the market is really, really crashing, okay? And that's usually what you wanna use, for example, a stop limit order, like I told you guys before, but this one is also a very cool one also, okay? But guys, comment down below and let me know, by this point, does this stuff make sense? And by this point, you should understand all of Robinhood's order, for example, a limit order, we understand that, a trillion stop order, we get that, a stop order, we understand that, and also a stop limit order, we understand that. In most cases, it's basically converting into the next one, and that's all it's doing, okay? But in the end, guys, most likely, what you're usually going to use is basically just buying at the market order if you're investing for the long term and basically doing like ETF investing like I basically do, and buying every single week i don't really have any limit orders like set in place only for one stock that i will tell you now and that's called delta so if delta falls below a certain price i'm going to go ahead and buy a lot more shares but for example i could have a trillion order saying for example well if delta goes ahead and falls 10 percent less i'm going to go ahead and sell it but if it keeps climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing well i keep making money and money and money until it goes below 10 percent all of a sudden okay that's a cool idea about understanding basically how the orders work when it comes to selling and buying in the market. Guys, hope this video helped you out a ton. If it did, comment down below and let me know. Any questions also, comment down below and let me know. And if you want to see a video basically on stock market turns, for example, good until cancel, or, or for example, AON or IOC, like all those terms that people mostly don't understand. If you want to see a video on that, let me know and I'll get to work on those also on stock market turns. But if you like this video right here, guys, well, like this video on, on top of that. Also, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you notified. And before I go, if you want to text me or talk to me one on one, just subscribe to my Patreon link down below, or just send me a DM on Instagram at Tiny Bryson. And on top of that, if you want to watch a video on basically how many stocks you need to make a thousand dollars in dividends, we'll watch the video right here. And then I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.